Public policy matters. It affects everything we do. If anything we do at this university is taking its rightful place in the national debate, it's the Public Policy Institute. Public policy is attached to everyone. Everyone is impacted by public policy, and this program recognizes that. Public policy really touches all businesses and all aspects of our society. You can't really escape public policy. It's part of everybody's life. And society just doesn't work without fluency in how public policy is made. We need people who are school educated in public policy to facilitate conversations. I think it's a great blessing in your work if you're blessed with a sense of purpose and you think it matters. Um, I believe this matters. I think if you went back to the board in February of 2012, if you'd have told them then that the next 10 years would, would look like it's looked, I think they would have found it hard to believe. Hey, what do you make of these numbers in Orange County and Duval County, the fact that it is 49 to 48 percent with Trump leading here in Jacksonville? Well, you don't want to overreact to, to small sampling. However, if these numbers... Rick Mullaney uh, came to me and to Bob Shercliffe 10, 12 years ago and said he wanted to start a public policy institute at JU. And of course, we asked him, what is that? And he described what he had in mind. And based on Rick's reputation and our knowledge of Rick and our long-standing friendship, we knew he could get it done. So Rick's idea about a public policy institute struck me as almost grandiose. But I knew the man, and I knew he would accomplish what he set out to do. And Rick Mullaney was sort of the visionary of this idea of bringing into universities a better understanding of everything from what we used to call civics to the role of policy in the making of laws and legislation. I thought it was a brilliant idea. One of the things we saw was reaching out to respected civic business and community leaders could be important. We established a 25-member board that Preston Haskell once called one of the best boards in the state of Florida. That board has played an instrumental role in establishing the institute and giving it guidance over the last decade. The real shift came in 2013. In 13, we had established the MPP curriculum for our MPP program, the first in the history of the state of Florida. Governor Scott came to visit at the very next board meeting in February, and then we established the Policy Matters radio program and our first public policy program that fall with the Affordable Care Act. Welcome to today's program. I'm Rick Mullaney, the director of the Public Policy Institute at Jacksonville University, and welcome to Policy Matters, the radio program that takes a close look at public policy issues that matter to you and to the future of our city, state, and nation. In 2015, we reached out to Channel 4 and suggested that we have an on-campus televised debate that we would co-host in the mayor's race. They were receptive, they thought it was a good idea, and that spring we had a televised debate on campus, the first in the history of the university, the first time this had been done by Channel 4. Now, from the campus of Jacksonville University, your moderator, Channel 4's Kent Justice. Good evening and welcome to our election 2015 special, the mayoral debate in Jacksonville. Thank you so much for joining us was so successful that it led to 12 televised debates in the future in the years that followed. In particular, the governor's race in 2018, televised statewide where we had the Republicans one night and the Democrats the next night. I believe that our values ought to guide us, our experiences ought to lead us and make us ready. And what I can say is that on day one, I'm ready to lead this state as governor. I can remember Rick's original ideas around, we could start bringing in people of real note so whether they were sitting mayors or sitting governors or those who'd run for president, that was a huge idea. And that, I think, was very enticing to the students who liked to be able to see people that they were reading about and watching. Being able to be a part of debates, political debates, gubernatorial, mayoral debates, and seeing that from the front row and literally the front row. Being mayor is about governing, and I'm the mayor right now. And I'm going to do anything I can to work with any organization, have the best practices to put Jacksonville first. Since 2013, we've had over 90 public policy programs on the Jacksonville University campus. So many amazing events that we've been to. We even had someone who's now a Supreme Court judge come in and talk to our classes. And that was absolutely incredible. In partnership with Notre Dame, we started the annual Hesburg Lecture. And in 2016, the lecture from Notre Dame was Professor Amy Coney Barrett. So we talked about Roe versus Wade and abortion. We talked about constitutional law. We talked about a variety of issues on the role of judges and the role of the Supreme Court and what it meant to the future. 
Later on, when the president nominated her to the U.S. Supreme Court in 2020, that interview with Amy Coney Barrett literally went viral. Nearly a million views on YouTube alone. What would we have in a Trump court? Who knows? <laughs> Channel 4, WJXT, reached out and asked me if I would do some commentary on a Saturday morning. I did, and after that morning, they reached out again very quickly, and then that began to grow. It went from Saturday morning to news broadcasts, the morning show, this week in Jacksonville, special events. Do you recall ever having the court's internal process, the behind-the-scenes discussion, revealed before the court actually made its opinion known? The short answer is no. Um, it was stunning. Uh, fortunately, it's rare. Don't recall anything quite like it, especially with the stakes being this high. Since 2015, we've been on television and radio more than 600 times. If Joe Biden wins uh, the Duval County, do you think he then wins the state of Florida? Not necessarily. In 2018, thanks to the vision and generosity of Chuck Woodhouse, we established the MPP Minority Fellowship and Scholarship Fund. That has really been a significant development that has dramatically improved the quality and diversity of the MPP program, a big milestone. There are more and more minority students applying to get in the program, and some of the folks on our advisory board and elsewhere have stepped up and they've given scholarships. And it's growing, it's got a momentum of its own, and the quality I mean, you just get, you're stunned at how good their resumes are. It's really amazing to just sit down and, and chat with some of these wonderful young people. They come from different walks of life, and to hear their experiences and what this program is doing for them, it's, it's just really rewarding to watch them as they progress and be very proud of them. Throughout my career, I have seen so many organizations who tout the notion that they are focusing on minorities. In this particular program, minority participation has been a focus. And I feel very, very proud because of the success of uh, the program. It certainly has gone beyond just checking the box. There is no doubt that the number one way in which this institute is, hopes to shape the future is through our students. Our MPP graduates are extraordinary, and they are doing some extraordinary things. The level of, of talent of these young people and the passion they have for getting involved in the affairs of their community has just been staggering to me. During the time that I was in the Public Policy Institute, we started encountering in, in America and around the country and around the world social justice issues. It became a, a passion to be that advocate for the communities that look like me and the communities that I come from. So advancing equity became really my focus for the capstone and researching specifically how it has impacted Jacksonville. So my capstone is focusing on lionfish. There is something that's always triggered me. It's something that I found absolutely fascinating is the invasive species issue there. I fell in love with it whenever I was doing a short master in Honduras. They are completely destroying the reef system and the beautiful side of it is that they're tasty. I know that sounds weird, but sometimes one of the solutions for public policy is actually, can we eat it, at least in the marine science realm? And that's one of the reasons that I love this crossover on the program is I get to bring my marine science knowledge to the public policy front. I get to help create informed reform. What we really hope is that our students, armed with the knowledge, the skills, and importantly, the core values we talk about here at the Institute, those values of integrity, of courage, of community stewardship, are gonna help shape a better future. In the end, I like to think over the last decade, we've become trusted. We've become an institute in which the community looks to us and they trust us. They believe we're an honest broker, that we try to do the right thing, that we live by the values that we're talking about. What I've been really impressed with, and I think people feel good about for the university, is this kind of outsized role that a small, light, tight, fast, smart institute that we call Public Policy Institute has begun to raise up the conversation. It has been so successful, it makes me think in even larger terms about the future. I hope that uh, the Public Policy Institute enlarges its vision, enlarges its influence. I had no idea that it was going to turn out the way it is. I mean, we are the nexus for political debate in this state. And a model for other universities to follow as well. 
there's, there's a huge opportunity here to send these young people out into the community armed with knowledge, experience, and most importantly, integrity. is a huge win-win for everyone. In my opinion, the next 10 years goes under the heading, you ain't seen nothing yet.